Following a request, I put together a sheet for calculating warp on the rigid header loom, which is kind of an essential piece of information, especially for beginners. But um, even if you're a more experienced weaver, you'll find that you need to do a set of calculations for most projects before you undertake them. And it's a sensible idea to do so, um, to know how much yarn you're going to need and you know, all of those planning things, how much it's going to cost you and what sort of heddle you'll need and all of that information that's so valuable to know. So I have this sheet available as a free download and it is available over at my weaving school and you can download it there. The reason I put it on my weaving school is that it is such an easy place for me to store information for people. Um, I've found that when I store files on Dropbox or something like that, often the links that I give people don't work. I'm not sure. It's probably a problem with me because I'm not all that techy. But I've found that it has been really good putting it on my weaving school site. It's been really easy for people to download. And um, surprisingly, a lot of people have used it so far, which is great. So if you want to download this sheet, you can go over to my weaving school. I will leave the link in the comment section. And you can follow that link and download the sheet. You do need to register for the school in order to download this sheet. But registering for the school is completely free. It doesn't cost you anything. Okay, so what I thought I would do is... Oh, also, I should mention... Um, the download includes this sheet, which is a blank sheet for you to print out and use over and over. Uh, and I also have included a sample sheet. Um, but what I'm going to do today is using this scarf, which is a, a finished piece, um, I'm going to use that as a, a sample for another sheet um, for people who are still kind of struggling with the figures. And if you are struggling with the figures, don't feel bad because... Like for me, I, I'm definitely no mathematical genius um, and I'm sure it would have been very valuable for me in my weaving journey if I had someone to explain all of this to me and lay it out like this to start with. So don't feel bad at all if it's a little bit confusing to you. Um, I would say that as very normal. So we're going to start by measuring the width of the scarf. I always start with the width measurements first. I find that easier. And I always measure in inches, even though I was raised with a metric system. When I'm sewing and weaving, I mostly use uh, the imperial system. And um, it's, it's pretty simple today with online calculators to um, convert to centimeters and meters, but do that at the end. Um, so measure in inches first and yards, and then if you want the conversion, do that at the end. It's, that's the most simple way, I think, that I find. Okay, so it's just over eight inches, so I'm going to round it to eight inches to make it more simple. So the first thing we're to do underneath width in bold print there, it says desired width of project. So that is the width that you would like your project to be when it's finished off the loom. So for that one, I measured eight inches. It's a good idea if you already have um, a scarf, well, if you're weaving a scarf, if you already have a scarf that you like the width of, or if you know that you like a particular width for scarves, you can just use that measurement. So I'm going to put an eight in the first on the first line. The next one says add on 10% to allow for shrinkage. Most yarns will have some sort of shrinkage, um, whether it's a lot or a little. 10% is a good amount of coverage to just as a general cover, um, depending on your yarn. But 10% is, is pretty good. So to add on 10% would be 0.8%. And then we can multiply that figure 
So we've got 8.8 .8 now, we've added those two together. Multiply by your chosen set. So for this yarn, this yarn, um, I have already done my inch ruler wrap test, which is another essential thing that you will need to do when you're calculating. And it gave me a figure of around eight. I don't have an eight dent read, but I do have a seven and a half dent read. So I would put 7.5 as my chosen set. Now I get my calculator. Very handy to have a calculator. So we need 8.8, um, .8, .8, which is our newly calculated width, allowing for shrinking, shrinkage as well. And we're going to times that, multiply that by 7.5 and we get 66. That is my number of ends, okay? And to get my number of slots, because I like to think of in terms of slots, I just find that more simple. I'll just halve this figure, and that means that 33 slots will have two ends in them. Now, Let's go to the desired length of my project. Oh, I'll measure my scarf. Now you could do your, if you're planning on a fringe, you could write out fringe separately to add that on, but I'm just going to include it. So let's see, I'm gonna include the fringe in the overall measurement. Once again, I'm measuring in inches. So I had 60 plus 23, so 83. That includes my fringes. Okay, so 83 inches is my desired length. I'm going to add on that 10% um, for shrinkage again. So 10% of 83 will be 8.3. Then I'm going to add on another 18 inches for waist. You won't always need that much for waist, but I always say it is really better to have more than to have less. So 18 inches is a good general figure. And then we can add that up on the calculator to get our total amount. So 83 inches total length, add on 10% for shrinkage, 8.3, add on 18 for waste, and I get 109.3 inches. So I, I don't like to have any points um, in my measurements. So I would either want, uh, round that up or down. My preference is to round up for the reason I just mentioned that I always like to have more than less. So 109.3, I am going to round it up to 110, even if that is not mathematically correct. Um, I'm making my own rules here. And then um, I can convert that to yards now. I have no idea how many inches to the yard because as I said I was raised with the metric system so I've got um, a little online calculator here and I'm going to put in 110 inches and that tells me that is 3.05 yards so I'm just going to make that three yards as a flat flat figure Okay, now I can go to the bottom section. And I'm going, it says yarn required for warp. I'm going to take my warp ends. So remember, um, 
up here we have our warp ends so let's just put a circle around that that figure there okay so we had 66 ends So we can repeat that figure here, 66 ends, multiplied by the total length in yards. Well, we had three yards, didn't we? And then we can do that on our calculator or do it in your head if you are that clever. That's 198 yards. And then if we want to, we can convert that into metres if metres are easier for you. Um, and in Australia, all of our, especially our knitting yarns, they all come in metres. So um, what do we have to do here? We've got to do yards to metres. So yards to metres. I love these things. One yard equals 0 0.914 metres. Okay, so let's put in our yards here. This, these online calculators are so brilliant. They've made life so much easier for me. Uh, 181 metres. Okay, so that now tells me how much yarn I'm going to need for my warp. And then people ask me, well, what about my weft? How can I calculate that? Well, um, I have read plenty of times that two-thirds of the amount of your warp should do for your weft but in my experience I've found that's not always true because there are variables um, for instance you may not be using the exact same yarn for your weft that you're using for your warp um, and even if you are what if you're doing a different yarn structure if you're doing some sort of uh, pattern or um, something other than plain weave then um, you will need more yarn that's for sure Okay, so um, as I say down here, this will, weft yarn will vary according to your chosen yarn and weave structure. But as a general rule, I feel happier when I have as much weft as I do for warp. That way, I know I won't run out. It makes it really simple. Just buy the same amount of the warp as you are for the weft and you can't go wrong. So I hope that helps to clear up the numbers for you. It's not all of that complicated. You'll get used to using a sheet like this and um, it will become a real friend to you. And also it's really handy to look back on later. You can scribble down some notes as you go uh, through your project down the bottom or on the back of the sheet or whatever it is. And then it becomes a reference point for later because if you make a project that turns out really, really well, um, you won't have any of that unfortunate amnesia that occurs after a project when you go, oh no, what did I do? What, you know, what was, what was it that made this project so good? You'll have all your calculations. Here you can write your yarn details on the same sheet if you want to and pop it in like a plastic folder or something like that and you always have that great reference. So uh, until next time folks, happy weaving. See you again.